Hi booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be the books that I read in the month of August. So August was a bit of a slower reading month for me. I believe that I actually only finished five books um, and started a sixth. Um, my plans for the month, which were to finish off books that I'd already started, completely went out the window. Um, had no desire to read any of them at all and I felt like forcing myself to read any of them was going to be counterproductive and I felt a reading slump coming on and I decided to avoid it and instead I went and mood read instead. Um, I did read two of the set books for the month which is really good which was the one of the advanced reader copies that I had to read and my book club pick for the month. Um, so without further ado let's actually talk about the five that I did manage to finish. So the first book that I managed to finish this month was July's book club pick. I didn't finish it in July. I didn't take part in the July book me club meeting. Uh, so apologies to Jess for that one. Um, but yes, uh, I kind of struggled with it a little bit um, to some extent, but to others didn't. It was quite interesting. And this book was uh, Whistle in the Dark by Emma Healy. This is about a woman, Jen, whose daughter had gone missing for four days while they were on a uh, artist retreat in the Peak District and Lana, 15 year old Lana is now back with them and the story picks up with them having found Lana and she's in hospital and the family are trying to come to terms with what happened to her and the fact that Lana is withdrawn and won't talk about what happened. Um, yes it's it was quite it was quite strange there's lots of mental health representation in this book lana as a 15 year old has been self-harming and she is in therapy to try and work out what is going on um but also as you read the story you start to wonder about the mental health of the mum and also lana's older sister as well whose name escapes me um and it's about her trying to retrace and get Lana to open up and talk about what happened while she was missing for those four days and yes we do get a resolution we do find out what happened but in the meantime you're seeing this spiral and the impact that all these things are having on the family um as well as Jen and um and Lana because it does the whole thing does affect the entire family it was a really interesting read and I was really glad that I picked it up um, and I do recommend it and Emma Healy has written another book um, called Elizabeth is Missing. I haven't really looked into what that one was about but I kind of enjoyed her writing style, the way she wrote it and I'm, I'm looking forward to maybe trying out her other works as well at some point in the future. So the second book that I finished was an e-book and it was Meet Me in Hawaii by Georgia Toffolo. This is Georgia's second book in the Meet Me series and I have to say I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it and I kind of whizzed through this one. This is about Marley who works at a surf school in Hawaii um, which gives surfing lessons to underprivileged and children who are having a hard time um, from the UK. In steps Todd Masters who runs a charity that provides these holidays for those children and the two of them meet because Todd tries to rescue a dog who is swimming in the ocean and he thinks is in some distress. However, Todd gets caught in a riptide and Marley has to rescue Todd instead. And cue some fun interactions between the two of them. These two were really fun and flirty and really, really enjoyed their actual relationship um, as it built. They were a bit push and pull. They obviously wanted to be together and they spent some great, great um dates together which weren't dates because they didn't want to be in a relationship with each other because they have issues with being in relationships they've seen um relationships fall down around their ears they've seen what um heartbreak can do to other people and they don't want that for themselves and in some ways don't feel that they deserve to have a happy ever after either so it was really really fun watching them fall in love and um, reading about them falling in love and then at the end uh, when they do finally come back together um, and start the relationship and acknowledge that they are in love with each other, you just cheer for them. It was just absolutely brilliant and I I absolutely loved it and 
like I say, could not wait then to get started on the third book in the Meet Me series, which was the one, the advanced reader copy that I read for the month. And that book was Meet Me in Tahiti. Meet Me in Tahiti is about Zoe and Finn, who are on Tahitian islands. Finn is a resort owner and they actually knew each other when they were teenagers back in the little Devonshire seaside town where they both grew up. And there was kind of a, a bit of a push and pull. Finn is a couple of years older and he was seen as the bad boy in town, even though he wasn't really involved in anything that went on. He was actually a really hardworking kid who was just trying to look after his mum, who wasn't very well. Um, Zoe was one of the four teenagers uh, in the town that were involved in a horrific accident. And as a result, she ended up in a wheelchair. But she decided that she wanted to see the world and she's become um, a holiday travel writer. And she goes at the last minute to Finn's new resort in Tahiti to write about it. And neither of them know that the other is going to be there. So it makes for a bit of a shock when they first meet up. It brings up a lot of old feelings because Zoe had a real crush on Finn but never did anything about it. She thought that Finn didn't see her in that way when they were teenagers, but Finn clearly did. Zoe was the good girl of the, the, the town. She was the one that um, the town all wanted to have a, a beautiful happy ever after because she was quite a sickly child. So Finn was uh, warned off of her by the rest of the town because they thought that he maybe wasn't quite good enough. So they have all these feelings that they're trying to fight and misunderstandings as well, which neither of them talked about. So this book was a bit more angsty than Meet Me in London and Meet Me in Hawaii um, because of the, the constant tension between the two of them, because there was all this unresolved feelings and thoughts that they, they just didn't talk about. And as adults, they still didn't talk about, even with people telling them that they needed to talk about it and people putting them in positions where they should be able to talk about it. Um, so it was a bit more angsty, was a little bit more difficult to read, wasn't quite as fun as the previous two books, but I still really enjoyed it. And I was really rooting for Zoe and Finn. I must admit, towards the end, I was getting to the stage where I just wanted to shake the pair of them and say, just talk, the two of you, please just talk. Um, but they got there in the end and they got to their happy ever after. And I'm glad because they were really right together and it really made sense that they would be together. So definitely, definitely really enjoyed this. I'm now eagerly keeping an eye out for an announcement of when the fourth book will be coming out. There is nothing yet, um, but it's going to be somewhere along the lines of Meet Me in Devon somewhere, because that's where the um, little town, seaside town is that the four girls grew up. And it will be Lily's story. She'll be the final one of the four. And I've really enjoyed this series. So it's uh, I do highly recommend it. If you want some light reading, if you're, you know, if you love a good romance or if you need some light reading in between, say, maybe some of the heavier books that you've read, then I would definitely uh, recommend these to you. They're fresh. They're fun. Um, I've read a lot of romance over the last 10 years. I think I've read in excess of 800 romance books and these stand out for me. And these aren't ones that I'm going to forget um, that easily. And they're probably going to be ones that I'll come back to at some stage to read them again because they just really are good fun and I really did enjoy them. And then after that, I didn't really want to read a fantasy romance novel. Um, so I didn't read the next arc that I had to read which was Traitors of the Black Crown but that book doesn't release until late in September so I knew I had time to read it and come back to it and like I said the idea of reading some of the books that I'm already part way through just put me in a real slump and I'm starting to rethink that maybe some of those books need to go on the DNF pile so yeah I'll see where we go I did try a couple of them I did try um put it up here but there is a book there is a fantasy series I can't remember who it's by no it's Dragon Shifters this is how much I remember of it anyway I started it I read a few pages of it put it down again didn't really want to pick it up I picked up the Silmarillion read a few pages of it put it down didn't really want to pick it back up 
and then I thought you know what I just need to read what's calling to me from my shelves and instead of going through my kindle which is what I used to do I picked from my bookshelves because one book in particular has been in my eyeline it's been one that's been intriguing me for a while and I picked up a copy in July and that book is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and boy was I glad I picked this up it took a little while for me to get going with it I must admit um but this is about Achilles and Patrocles and it's told from Patrocles point of view and it's a retelling of their relationship um in the run-up to the death of Achilles at the Battle of Troy and it gives a bit more in terms of exploring more in the background as to why Achilles would go off the rails quite so much um, after having avoided his death for 10 years, um, why he would then completely lose it and do the one thing that he knows is going to end up with him dying. Um, this book starts out with Patrocles as a young boy and he goes to the choosing of Helen to be Menelaus' uh, wife in Sparta um, and then from there it then triggers an event where he then gets sent to uh, King Peleus court where he meets Achilles and they're both nine-year-old boys at this point. Achilles uh, befriends Patrocles and the two of them then are inseparable and they go off and study under Chiron together um, and they study warfare together, although Patrocles isn't as accomplished at warfare as Achilles, obviously, we know Achilles is, but their friendship blossoms into more while they're under the tutelage of Chiron and they become lovers. It's known that they're lovers among the court of King Pe Peleus, um, however, Thetis, Achilles' mother, is not happy about it and she does what she can one, to stop Achilles from meeting his fate and two, to separate him from Patrocles and what she thinks is a toxic friendship and toxic relationship. However, nothing can part them. They both go off to the Battle of Troy together. And yeah, it's, I mean, I'm just giving you the bare bones of the story here. I'm not really giving you any spoilers. Um, we know Achilles uh, is a big part of the Battle of Troy. Um, and we know that it takes 10 years and we know that Achilles dies after the original myth in um, Homer's Iliad poem set, tells that uh, Achilles goes off and does what he does after the death of Patrocles, his friend Patrocles. Madeline Miller has just adapted that friendship into so much more. And I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed this for the LGBTQ plus representation. It's not something I've ever really read a lot about before. It is something I need to read more into. Um, I enjoyed it because I love mythology on, and I've read nowhere near enough of it and I've not explored anywhere near enough of it. It's given me a real taste for mythological retellings. So I'm looking forward to possibly picking up Ariadne by Jennifer Saint very, very soon because this has given me a taste for it. It's really given me a taste to actually dive into the actual myths and to go back to more, um, not more historical tellings like the Iliad and the Odyssey. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really glad I picked this one up in the end. Um, because once I actually got to them being teenage boys, I couldn't put it down. And the second half of the book, this, um, flowed really really quickly um and there were times when i was screaming at the characters because i could see what was coming but they couldn't um so yeah so i think i've waffled on quite a lot about this one now but yes um definitely give this one a go i'm probably going to pick up cersei at some point um which is the second book by madeline miller um but i really enjoyed reading this one and i like i said i'm really glad that i picked it up the final book that I finished was Red and the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. Now, I'm filming this on the 31st of August, so I finished this yesterday. This was the August book club pick for the month, and that was because the word red was in the title. I'm sorry it's so reflective. Um, it's got the shiny, because it's library copy, it's got the shiny cover on it. And this book, I don't really know. I think this book fell short of the mark for me of what I was 
hoping to get out of it. It is supposedly about race, class, sexual orientation um, and what it means um, to be a parent. I felt that Jacqueline Woodson really explored what it means to be a parent, but she didn't really do very much in the terms of race, sexual orientation. They were just little add-ons to the telling of how people's lives changed in the aftermath of um, a 15-year-old girl giving birth. Um, so yeah, so I think it fell short of what I hoped for, what I was looking for. I don't know that yeah i'm really not sure so what to make of this one um i wouldn't say i didn't enjoy it i wouldn't say i did i think it was average for me um but yeah i'm i'm not too sure i'm not too sure about this one at all so would i recommend it from the point of view of it being told um about the aftermath of a teenager giving birth and how that affects her the father, the grandparents, how it affects their entire lives, then yes, I would say read it for that. But as for the other things that it says it goes back to, because apparently it deals with the Tulsa massacre, race massacre in 1921. But it literally, it touches on that in one paragraph. Um, it's set in 2001 and in Brooklyn. Um, and it only touches on September 11th. Um, so yeah, so it kind of like, it makes all these promises in the blurb, but I don't think it actually really delivered. And I don't think they sold this very well at all. Um, would I read more by Jacqueline Woodson? Yes, I probably would. Um, just maybe this one didn't quite hit the mark for me. So like I say, I'm filming this on the 31st of August. So there is still a few hours left of the day. I've got a few, I've got to edit at least one video to go up, um, if not more. But there's going to be some time to read today. I have picked up another book. I'm a bit unsure about whether to talk about it. It is an author who is now known as being problematic. Um, but yes, I'm just going to show it briefly. So I'm reading God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. It's the second book in the Nevernight Chronicles. And I enjoyed the first one. Um, I'm enjoying the second one. Some of the writing style is maybe not quite doing it for me. It's dual timeline and I think maybe it's just the formatting of this book that's actually bothering me with the, the dual timeline. I, I never normally have a problem with dual timelines. It's quite clear which timeline you're in as you're reading it. Um, yeah, but I'm not going to finish it. I'm only 75 pages in at this point. There's no way I'm going to finish it today, but it's definitely going to be a carryover into September. So I might talk about how I feel about it a little bit more then so five books it's not bad people wouldn't say that's a bad month it's not a bad month i don't know why i'm saying it's a bad month it's not really um for some people that would be an excellent month for me it's a bit slow like say i i have read in excess of, of 10 books in a month the last few months so yeah it's a bit slow for me and i think maybe it was because i was gonna force myself to read some books that maybe I didn't really want to pick up. I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I went with other options instead and I hope that my reading isn't too affected and that in September I can maybe pick it back up again. But if you enjoyed this video then please give me a like and if you haven't already then please subscribe to my channel and I make videos. They go up every Monday at half past six and I'm maybe making some changes to the channel so you might see more frequent uploads from me. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Bye.